<laughs> yeah, they were made to look very average yeah. from uh, from a good Italian side. Yeah. And uh, what do you think Wales, are, they'll be watching that game um, tonight? Uh, uh, would that be a good result? Would they be thinking, well, Italy are going to probably win this group anyway? That's probably the best result for us. I think that was the best result for Wales. Yeah. They'll be sitting there rubbing their hands together, licking their lips. I think they would have enjoyed seeing Turkey look so poor. Mm. Um, and that Turkey would be lacking a little bit of confidence going into the, to the next game. So that's a positive, I'm sure, for Wales. Um, they've yeah. got to get their job done, though. Yeah. And now that's the thing. Yeah, Italy huffed and puffed in, in the first half. They, were, they played ex exceptional football at times but couldn't find a chance. That all changed in the second half with an own goal, of course. Yeah, but... with an own goal, but they, they, were, they were getting into those positions and we said, Gary, in the, uh, in the first half that they were very good up until that final third, but have a look at this for a pass. He just opens the defence up there and all of a sudden they've got them outnumbered and he, he sits Merez down, goes past him with ease and... Demarel just can't sort his feet out. It's a horrible position for the defender to be in, Rio. Yeah, it is, and he's, he's, he's actually not in a bad position where he is there. Obviously, the, the left-back does slip. I don't know, he's on a dance floor, it seems, there. Mm. And the ball comes at an awkward height there. It's, you think to yourself, do you let it go and hope that the forward goes past the forward? But instinct kicks in there and you think you want to defend at all costs, but the ball's an impossible <coughs> ball to defend. You can't really blame him there. Yeah. But this was, this was something that was coming. They were probing, they were probing, they were knocking the door constantly, this Italian what side. What would you do there as a defender? Do you, would you have let uh, this... You I don't know, it's difficult. It? I've, Your I've instincts actually, probably make you want to do something. I could that... say one thing now, but when you're in that position, things change, like you yeah. say, your instincts kick in and you just do what naturally comes yeah. to you and the ball ends up in the back of the net, unfortunately yeah. for him. Yeah, he couldn't really control it. Uh, Immobile was, was a constant threat, wasn't he? As, as you would expect, his movement is... He's a goal poacher, isn't he? Yeah, his movement is superb. I remember when he was at Sevilla, I already looked at him and thought that he was a fantastic player. Mm. Uh, but yeah, you know, he just kept going, you know. You can see that he's got the passion to just try his best until he's a yeah. proper goal scorer. Mm, yeah. You know, he really his first goal in a, in a major tournament for Italy and that would have meant a lot, wouldn't it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. He was, he was a menace. He was a threat. He was constantly getting into good positions. We highlighted him at, uh, at half time, and it was, it was likely that he was going to uh, get uh, get a goal this evening, put it in the back of the net, and he and he did that. And that's not an easy finish. Yeah, he made it look easy, a, though, didn't he? Yeah, it? definitely not easy. Though. He opens his body up. You can see him there. He's on the move. They can't. They don't know where he is. And he slots it in with ease. It's a very, very good finish. And that's yeah. always a bonus for any team. When your striker, when your goal scorer gets a goal early in a tournament, it, it can make a big difference that's to exactly a team. exactly what you want. Yeah. Because uh, I always say that for me, the team is the team, but the striker is the one that makes you win games. And uh, for me to have the striker in form, yeah. it's vital for this tournament. Yeah. Do you hear that, Rio? The strikers that count. Yeah, you guys, you played the false nine, so you've yeah. got three attackers. <laughs> You're all going to say the same count. thing. <laughs> You're outnumbered. Um, well, Insigne. Yeah, oh, a tremendous little player. Yeah. I mean, his he's movement, the way he actually combines with Spinazzola as well is, is, is really yeah. good to see. I think that's going to be a constant... It, it took him a while threat. to get that little bendy one, didn't he? There was yeah. one in the first half, and I think there was a couple of other efforts as well. This is yeah. the one in the first half, but he, yeah, we he found his range eventually. Yeah, definitely, but up until this, this part of executing the finish, he was fantastic today, and especially in the first half. And then he got his, his, his rewards in, in the second half here, a mistake from the goalkeeper. But then it's about the movement, the passing. Fantastic weight of pass. He can just then go on to run onto it and curl it into that corner. But it's a, a finish that I'm sure we've seen many times in his club shirt, but here in Italy, in the yeah. championship. What I liked different. about uh, Insignia today is his positioning, because we are talking about this kind of robotic uh, yeah. football nowadays, and he was just everywhere, mm. in little behind his pocket, sometimes wide. He was coming inside very, very well, looking for the one-twos, the passing. and Given quite a lot of freedom. Yeah, a lot of freedom. Yeah. Yeah. I, know, I know that that was a mistake from the goalkeeper there, but the way they won the ball and then the way they passed mm. and moved with pace, as they did in the first half for that chance for Insignia. The, the pressing was terrific, wasn't yeah, it? They right did it across. really, really well. Mm, they did. Uh, Spinazzola caught the eye, didn't he? Yeah, I thought he was fantastic. I saw him against Man United, and he, Man United were actually lucky that he came off injured, I think, in that game, because the way he plays is an outlet. He's always high up the pitch. We saw, we spoke about at half-time, yeah. they stay start as a four at the back, but when they get possession and good possession, they go into a three, three across the back, and he's released to be almost like a left winger, and he patrols that left side on his own, but he's so comfortable in doing it. He's a right-footed uh, player playing left side, which, is, uh, which isn't normal, as you don't normally see that, but he just looks so comfortable and he, he wants to be 1v1 
And then obviously it's about your execution, it's about your decision making. And invariably today he, he got it right. And he, this is going to be a common threat, a common theme, I think, with this Italian team. Him and Insignia out here combining, doing their, doing their little roles together are going to cause a lot of teams problems, I think. Mm -hmm. How do you combat this as if you're playing against them? Turkey certainly couldn't manage because tactically it really does work, doesn't it? It does, but I think that's when he, he goes forward that high. Yes, they play through the back. There, there's areas we saw twice in the first half, Yilmaz running into the, into the channels behind the fullbacks. That's an area that needs to be exploited, I'm sure. Mm. Teams with a bit more composure, with better passes as well, may, may be able to get players into them areas to cause problems to the, the two centre backs, especially for this Italian team. Mm. Their, best, their, their best assets aren't actually running into, into big areas, so you've got to try and exploit them there. Yeah. More direct play against them possibly will be a way out because Turkey couldn't find their way out. But then the, you've got to have players up there to play I on think the end so. of things. I think so. I think today they managed it well because, as we said, Yilmaz was on his own. He's not used to even play on his own in his in his team. But uh, we could see Kelini sometimes even. Uh, in the third, uh, near the box, mm. you know, where he, yeah. he, he made some shots uh, yeah. when he recovered the ball, he was so high at the pitch. But for this reason, you know, if they attack behind Kilini, especially, I think, on the left hand side, because Spinazzola is so high up, I think they, they can have problems with a better team. He's, what, he's 36, 37 in August, I think, Kilini. Um, he's, 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 he's not lost his fighting spirits, has he? It, it's There's a block right at the end, it? you're 3-0 up, you're getting on a little bit. It's, it's a warm night in defenders. Rome, but boy, oh boy. You can see how much it means to, yeah. uh, to him and his teammates because of that. What, uh, his reaction what is great, look there, that punches the air, doesn't I mean, it? They, they just don't want to concede and, and they, they haven't been conceding goals at all and that's one of the reasons why, because of that. You can see the reaction and there's the <laughs> Gianluca eye, behind him, yeah. Yeah, big smile on his face. Good to see he's been through a, a tough time. But, um, you know, how much can we read into that, that opening game? Is it, was it a case of Italy being seriously good or Turkey just being really poor? I think it's a combination of both. I think, I think Italy executed today in terms of, from a tactical perspective, but also individually. Some people there maybe had question marks over them as individuals. Immobile come in, comes in, scores his first goal in a, in a, in a European yeah. Championship. Little things like that that trigger actually actual confidence in these in these players will, will wake this team up even more, and there'll be a togetherness. You saw the way the team all got together after the game. Yeah. Now you're going to see maybe a togetherness come and a spirit that, that maybe wasn't there or wasn't yeah. there to the outside. It's there now completely. Uh, from, from your experience, Cesc, how important is it to start quickly? Because Spain did in 2008, didn't you? Although you would lost your first game in in the World Cup in mm. 2010, what is the difference? Yeah, it is a difference because of the the press sometimes can put a lot of pressure on you, you know, in mm. big countries like Italy, like in Spain, like in England. And I think, you know, to, to get through this first phase where you release all the pressure and you get all the confidence, especially with your mm. some of the best players playing well, scoring goals, I think it's vital. And, uh, you know, the question is, can they keep going? Can they keep it mm. up? You know, they still have, like Rio said, some players coming back, like Verratti, who will be vital for this team. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was very impressed and uh, the, way the, the way it looks mm -hmm. and the way they look, Italy, is a, is a threat. Yeah. We saw a cold turkey, didn't we? <laughs> they were poor. <laughs> they were, I mean, they were, yeah. I mean they, were, they were made to look poor, but they weren't. Every time they got the ball, they had nowhere to go. Yeah. But they had nowhere to go because of the way the Italians yeah. pressed them. They were brave, Italy, in yeah. terms of what they did and doing that. But this, we they said it at half time, this was a this was a constant, like when Turkey got the uh, got the ball back, they just they just didn't have anywhere to go because they had to rely on that many men to get back and defend. There, there's the the numbers there. So when they had the ball back, it was a case of well, they, they just had to get it forward. And when they did get it forward, there was no one there. But that was the impress one of the impressive things for for me is. That happened all game. Is that whenever they lost the ball, it's either said, "Okay, fine, that's no problem. We're going to go after you," and uh, and they did it really well. And that's how they got possession back. And they were dangerous. Same thing again. Look, four men in and uh, in, in and around. They know where to go. Because of that, they constantly got the ball back, and then they were put put them under pressure again. I, I think also to add to that, Turkey were probably the creators of their own problems. They didn't have the courage, the composure yeah. to play, to take an extra touch and play an extra pass. When you get you get pressed in games, a big part of being able to get over that is to be able to have the courage to take the ball and want it. And not enough players in this Turkey team wanted to do that today. No, um, very impressive tactical display uh, once again from from Italy. He's doing a great job there, isn't he? Because they were in, you know, they didn't qualify for the World Cup. Mm -hmm. 
and here they are now looking great. Every team, every national team, they, you, you need sometimes a transition and sometimes they are bigger <laughs> than yeah. others and yeah. I think Mancini has realized that and he's done very well. He's yeah. given chances to young players, to players that before they, they, they were dreaming to play for yeah. the national team and, and they couldn't and, and for that you know it brings, you can see at the end of the, of the game, they are all together, yeah. they have the togetherness, you feel it, they are friends, they want to play for each other and also they have a lot of quality, tactical ability, intelligence, so they've got a lot. It's, it's changed, changed the style. style. Yeah, that's yeah, brave, it's isn't it? the style Especially in Italy. Of, of play. I mean, we're not really used to seeing Italy pressing high, mm. particularly with the two mm. centre-halves mm. who might, because of their age, struggle for, for pace and the ball in behind. And that, that'll be interesting to see how they cope with that because teams will look at the way they play and look to exploit that. But, yes, it's brave in what he's done because they, they were a mess when mm. he took over. And he's, mm. he, it looks as if he's got a nice little combination mm. of experience and mm. players, uh, young players coming, uh, coming through. And he seems to have a very good team spirit mm. there. I think, I think another thing as well, it's Italian teams of years gone by have always had a number 10 or a superstar in their team. Mm. And I think that's maybe helped him as well, not having that. He's normally, you've had a Baggio, you've had a Totti, you've had Del Piero, who've, you've got to have them in their team. And the pressure would have been from the media back home in Italy, these guys have to play. I don't think he's had that, which has been better for him to actually create a collective rather than around an individual, yeah. which has been good for him. And the other thing, of course, is, is they got 1-0 up, they got 2-0 up, and they, <coughs> press, they kept going. It was old Italian style, wasn't it? They'd get a lead and then you'd just sit back. Uh, it's the first time they'd ever scored three in a, in a European Championship game. Oh, they really went Amazing. for it, and it's, they were brave. And it's nice to see. It's nice to see, yeah. and it shows that when you go for it and you have the quality, you win games and you win them comfortable. So mm. that's very good. OK, well, uh, coverage of Wales-Switzerland begins at uh, quarter past one tomorrow on BBC One. That's followed by Denmark versus Finland, BBC One at a quarter to five. England kick off their campaign on Sunday against Croatia, BBC One at one o'clock. Uh, fight fans, look out for Bellator 260 uh, on iPlayer, 10.30 tonight. And keep up to date with all the latest news from the tournament on Euro Daily. Uh, listen on BBC Sounds. So we're off and running. It's it's great. It's been a long way, isn't it? It's it's great to get and getting a few goals and a good performance. I think that's a good part of it. We're all sitting here. Everyone can't wait yeah. for this tournament to start. We've yeah. all been like chomping at the bit, and then you get a bore, bore, nil nil draw. No, we got a three nil today. Convincing victory. Yeah. One of the teams that always in, from history tells good tournaments, yeah. and they're a force. They've started well. Can't wait for the next games. Spain tomorrow. Looking forward to seeing them play. Yeah. No, Mon actually, no, Monday. Monday yeah. Sorry, Monday. Yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself. Definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah. A young squad again. Yeah. A young team, a bit like Italy, in a transition. You don't know what to really expect mm. from it, but uh, you know we hope that uh, yeah. we can have good performances. And good Spain got a chance, I think. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I won't, I won't, I, really, honestly, because uh, Luis Enrique has changed a lot. Yeah. You know his teams. Uh, and uh, I don't really know what's the best team right now, mm. but you know I believe in him. He's a great manager. He knows what he's doing. So hopefully, yes. Mm. Yeah, and, and there's a few games to look forward to coming up now. Do you think teams watch him when they see a team that, like, you know, you're all you've all experienced being in tournaments? When you see a team like that play, the, the players go, "Oh, blimey, Italy look quite good." They do, though, don't they? That's how it is. Yeah, because we yeah. we spoke about teams uh, before this game kicked off, who we thought were the favourites, who we thought were going to have a good chance. There's, there's no doubt all the players sit together and, and watch the yeah. game, they watch the opening ceremony, and Italy have sent a little message out there to everyone yeah. tonight. Yeah, um, lots of teams to come. Who are you looking forward to seeing next? England, man. No. I can't wait to watch England. Yeah, I'm just buzzing I with England. I want to see the, the young attacking players that we've got, uh, well, Gareth's got at his disposal, to see that coming out and playing and, and hopefully hitting the ground running the way that this Italian team yeah. just to give us a little bit of a boost. And it's interesting wait. as well, Italy played at home yeah. in Rome. They've got all three of their group games. It's a, it's a big advantage that England also share. Yeah, I mean, you, when you look at what happened in, in 96, as I said, I know, we know that they, they, they might not play all the games there, but they're three. They can go out and make a statement, hopefully. You certainly can. Uh, we're off and running. Uh, Rio, thank you very much. Seth, great to see you again. It's been a while. Yep. Alan, as always, thank you. Uh, that's uh, it from us as a brilliant... Italy, stuffed turkey. Goodbye.